Okay. So, in the last class we were doing, we were talking about the dry docking where we take a ship to the uh, dry dock which will reduce, lower the water level and um, consequently finally the ship will, I mean the ship will keep going down till it finally touches the bottom and then there is a reaction force which supports the uh, ship and um, consequently the buoyancy force gets replaced by the reaction force completely and fine and then they put these keel blocks they hold the things onto the ship the ship is held firmly and then it's okay then the water you don't need the water to hold the ship so th now we were doing some derivations which we didn't complete yesterday uh, in the last class so um, let's uh, do the same thing one part we did the second part we we'll, uh, we need to do that is uh, consider this so we are having a ship that is being dry docked so from here we are having the reaction force from the ground p is the reaction force then uh, let us assume that uh, this is the center line of the ship therefore at this point you have g uh, the center of gravity of the ship at that point the weight of the ship will act down w now there is a buoyancy force acting on the ship um, we know that the buoyancy force will be given by w minus p w minus p now this problem the question what in this there are two derivations right now which we did one we completed last class one we, we which we didn't do now the two derivations what is the purpose the purpose is to find how much the gm changes okay that means um, the metacentric height how much the metacentric height changes as a result of uh, this dry docking so that is the purpose of this purpose of this uh, two exercises now there are two the thing is there are two ways in which you can see a change in gm um, for instance you can look at it in two ways one m can decrease okay then let's k is fixed let's fix g uh, k is fixed now there is a g there is an m initially and in that is when there is no p that is when the uh, reaction force from the ground has not come there is a, a keel which is fixed always and there is a g and there is an m now the way is in which we can change gm is for instance suppose the m moves okay then the gm can change k is fixed but g m is moving so the gm can change g is also fixed i mean k is fixed g is fixed m is moving therefore the gm is changing now another possibility is uh, k is fixed m is fixed g is moving okay these are two ways in which your gm can change now the two exercises are two ways in which you can look at the change in gm i'll explain what i mean by that for instance let's take the first one now look at this figure that is we have the reaction force p and we have the w minus p the buoyancy force act let's say this is b which is the center of buoyancy here w minus p is acting here p is acting and g now there there is one there are two ways actually in which you can view this p for instance p number one way is, is that p can be viewed as an additional buoyancy force it is it is not a buoyancy force mind you it's a reaction force but you can look up it's a force upwards anyway so you can look upon it as an additional buoyancy force because the real buoyancy force actually becomes smaller when you compare it with p therefore this p can be compared as an additional buoyancy force acting at a different point it's not acting at b but it's acting at some other point but it's like a buoyancy force that is number one one way in which you can view p number two view way is see you have the weight of the ship acting at g you can assume that is the displacement of the ship acting at g you can assume that uh, p is like a negative displacement that is the second way to view it see p is upwards it is a force upwards you can view it as it is a reaction force anyway it's not buoyancy it's not 
displacement. It is not either of these, but this is a hydrostatics and stability problem. So, we are interested in buoyancy and displacement. So, two ways in which we can view P is one you view it as a buoyancy force acting at a different point, not at the center of buoyancy. Another view is it is a G negative G negative displacement, okay. It is upwards, it is a negative displacement acting at some other point. So, these are two ways in which you can view the same thing. So, what happens as a result? First case, you have the ship uh, first without P, first without P and then with P, what happens is that when so you when this P comes, there are two buoyancy forces now, there is a W minus P acting at the center of buoyancy and there is a P acting somewhere and a resultant of these two, it can be assumed to be acting at some the centroid of these two. And this is what we did in the last class. We, I will just explain quickly what I did in the last class also. So, this will give you the W acting somewhere in between the W minus P and P, means there are two buoyancy forces, one here, one here and as this figure shows, there are two buoyancy forces W minus P here and P here and so you can assume that there is some, the total force is obviously W minus P plus P W acting somewhere in between at the centroid of these two forces. Imagine there is a third force W, but that we are not considering right now. We are just saying there are two buoyancy forces and at the centroid of the two buoyancy forces, the net buoyancy force will act. The total buoyancy force will act at the centroid of the two buoyancy forces. So, at this point somewhere in between, we know where it is because we know W minus P and we know W. So, we, uh, we know W minus P and we know P, therefore, we know where this W will act because there are two forces acting, it is centroid you can find when I mean you that is what we did, we put x and y and we give, got the equation. So, now, this is the first part, this is the first way of solving. Now, what happens as a result? What happens is that when you have this W minus P and an additional buoyancy force, your M, um, see your initial M is here. Now, because initially your M is here, your M actually can be C assumed to be at M1 now. When you assume that P is a buoyancy force, what will happen is that the result is that you will see that your M has come down. Your mathematics will show that your M has come down. Okay. Now, what has happened? G has not changed. G is still the same. So, your G M has decreased. This is the first part and we got an expression for this change in M. I, I would not do that again, M0, M1, it became like this, okay, it came like this. This is M0, M1, this is the distance through which the metar center shifts. Therefore, if we have our initial K M0 uh, and K, I mean K, once you have the initial K M0, which is, how do you get that? It is always got from the hydrostatic data. Hydrostatic data will always give you K M. So, K M0 means without any P that is actually the once you consider the ship there will be some K m and note that K a meta center is always defined for a particular draft okay? because if the draft keeps changing your m will keep changing. Basically the meta center is defined for healing. Okay? So, you have ship like this initially upright and it heals you know that when you put uh, that concept we, we, are, we are clear now at that point of B where the center of buoyancy is you draw a vertical where it hits the initial vertical that is called as the meta center. That meta center depends upon that um, um, draft at which it is existing and it is healing that is the draft at which it is healing okay, that is what it depends on and if the initial draft is here there will be some value of M0 it will be here. If the draft increases or decreases as it goes up or down your M0 will be at some other point. So, your K M0, which you call as, um, okay, there is no term for it, K M0 as it, as it is or your metacentric height G M0, any of it will depend upon your draft. Okay. So, right now here we have K M0. Suppose you are given K M0, that is your hydrostatic, from the hydrostatic data we have K M0. Once you have that, then um, using this equation, you can get M0 M1, provided you know P. Okay. One way to find P is uh, again from the hydrostatic data, that is what will happen, 
I'll, that is I'll explain. That is, what happens is that ship is initially put. I mean, it's in the dry dock. There is some draft. It stays at some draft. Then the draft keeps coming down. Okay, and finally, that due to that change of draft, there will be a change in volume. Okay, in the displacement, and a con correspondingly a change in the up thrust. Okay, now that change will be borne or it will be taken up by this p finally when it comes down that difference will be taken up by p that is the reaction force so suppose you suppose you see that the change in draft uh, suppose you see that the change in draft is something okay you that we will be given that if we know once we know the change in draft we from the hydrostatic data again we can find the hydrostatic curves in fact so we are, that also we explained that is um, um, that is usually we are given some curves which will say um, draft versus draft versus displacement so once you are given the so for each draft you will know what is the displacement of the ship once you know the hydrostatic curve so that of course you need to do this problem but once you design a ship you are going to design all that you so that initial design once you do all the design all this comes with you this is known as a hydrostatic curve the whole thing comes with you so you look at that you find the displacement at each draft so you find the change in displacement that draft you can always read i mean any dry dock you can easily change see the change in draft read the change in draft read the from the hydrostatic curve find the change in displacement find the change in weight that is p that will be bond, that when that touches the ground that will be borne by the weight of the keel block okay that will take the weight so that's what this is so this is the first first way of doing it so you know km0 from here you know k m0 m1 means uh, the change in meta center so if you do k m0 minus m0 m1 you will get your k m1 okay that will give you and if you know the position of g i mean if you know kg then note that in this method of derivation g is not changing g is fixed therefore this k m 1 minus k g will give you your g m 1 and in these derivations we usually write it like this g 0 because g is not changing at all so it becomes g 0 m 1 so there are initially there was g 0 m 0 which was before the vessel touched the ground before dry docking or before the critical instant i defined critical instant is the instant at which the ship touches the keel block so before that it is g 0 m 0 then it becomes g0 m1 according to our this method of uh, solving the problem so this will give you your new position of gm g0 m1 is your new gm okay and if this gm has become negative you know that the ship has become unstable okay this is first way of doing it then <coughs> then the next way of doing the problem is same thing i'll do this So this is the center line of the ship. Initially, you have G here, and you have the weight W acting. Now, what do we assume? We assume that there are two weights. Now we have, of course, at this point there is B, the center of buoyancy, and of course there is a W minus P acting here. But that is not. We are not bothered about the buoyancy part in this problem, in this way of definition. So what we are doing here is that we assume that P which is the reaction force is like a negative displacement so right now we have two displacements one is the weight of the ship acting down and there is a negative displacement p acting somewhere to the side okay or to the here At acting here there is a negative displacement so what do we have we have a resultant which is w minus p actually it will act somewhere you if you do it you will see it will come here since the forces are in opposite directions it will come here w minus p will be a force acting here Okay, now same concept as before. W minus P will be the 
centroid of these two forces W and P, we can uh, we can take the distances as this as x. Let us take this as x and this as y. Then, um, so see what you have here is this is your G0. In this particular case, what you have is so before you have P coming, you just have W acting at G0. This is G0. Once you have this P coming, you are assuming that there is a new displacement which is a resultant of this old initial displace, I mean, this W and the reaction force which is W minus P, it is acting at a slightly different point, it is acting here, this is G1, okay? G0 and it is G1. Now in this method of derivation what has happened? Your G has moved up, okay? so actually it makes no difference. You will see when you do the slight differences there of course in the calculations, but like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 meters you will get a difference, but other than that you will see that when you do the GMs using the two methods one in which you assume that there is a decrease in the metacentric height because you assume that P is actually a buoyancy force or number two you assume that in uh, you assume that P is a negative displacement in that case there is an increase in GM increase in the point or is going upwards of G G goes upwards there is a new G now that either way whether G goes up or M comes down there is a change in GM there is a decrease in GM that remains same and it is just the way in which you look at it let us I mean let us derive this expression now same thing um, we say that now as you can see W minus P is the centroid therefore W into Y will be equal to P into X this is W W into Y is this distance is P into X. So, P into X is a moment causing like this, W into Y is a moment causing like this, they are in balance because this is the centroid okay, at that point. Then now it is just a, some um, like X, you can just look at this figures, you will see, um, you know what is G0, G1, see you have to make these triangles, this is K, okay, you make this full triangle. So, you get look at this triangle you will get this kg sin phi and y becomes g0 g1 sin phi um, then therefore w into g0 g1 sin phi equals p into kg1 sin phi or w into g0 g1 equals p into kg1 w into G0, G1 is equal to P into KG0 plus G0, G1. Uh, therefore, W into or you can I will just bring the W minus P into G0, G1 equals P into KG0. Therefore, G0, G1 is equal to P into KG0 divided by W minus P. Now, what did we get for the previous thing? We got, we saw that um, in the previous case, we saw that M0, M1 was P into K M0 divided by W. Okay. Now, at any rate, you need some, in this, we will see how to, we will do some problem to compare the values. Um, so, this is two ways in which you are doing the problem. One in which M comes down, one in which G goes up. Problem is the same. It is just two ways of doing the problem. Um, okay. Then now, what I thought this time is that these problems that I am having, instead of my writing down all this, I'll put it in the uh, screen. So you just read it like this. For instance, the first problem, I mean I did not write the whole problem. See the problem says that you are given some ship that is to be dry dock. This I started last class. Now, um, see you are told that the initial, the ship is initially at a draft of 5 meter. Okay. Okay, do not show my hand. So it is at a draft of 5 meter, then displacement, di displacement is at uh, given at 17,052 
uh, tons. Now, um, some high. Huh? Oh, that is a good point. I didn't think of it. Yeah. Okay. So seventeen thousand and fifty-two tons. Um, then, uh, then what happens is that the peak keeps increasing. Okay. The ship is being dry docked. So, or so slowly the uh, the weight of the sh or the displacement of the ship, the draft comes down, and therefore the up uh, the buoyancy decreases and the weight displacement. Um, W minus p, W minus p decreases. Now, or rather, in this case, you can see that the p keeps increasing. I haven't written down the values. Now, this is the the problem is that you are given the hydrostatic data. You are given km. This without this, you cannot do. Okay, km values are given, like different values and different drafts have to be given. I didn't write the whole value, but that whole there is a big table. So, like this, 14.08, 15.06, like this, the km zero will come um, for different drafts. And now your question is: Find out the draft at which the ship becomes unstable. Now, how will you figure out the ship is unstable? You will figure out by saying that at that point GM becomes negative. Okay? Yeah, GM becomes zero. Exactly. So GM becomes zero. I mean, when you are doing this table, at some point you will see that it, the value becomes negative. Actually, you have to find it at zero. Exactly. So GM G1 uh, GM becomes zero. So you have to uh, do that. Then um, so, for that you need to find out how the GM keeps decreasing. Now, this is a very straightforward problem. We have seen how the GM keeps decreasing. There are two ways in which you can solve the problem as we said last time. You can keep decreasing your M and find your new values of GM or you can keep increasing your G, raising up your G and finding out the new values of GM. In this particular problem, they have uh, actually trying to work. Um, I do not think there is anything like that. Uh, uh, if you do that, there is a slight difference. First of all, actually you should get exactly same. It is because of errors in the values of, see km, it is not always accurate. Means like here you see this draft km0, 14.08, uh, 15.26 like this, they are not absolutely accurate. There is one problem which does both values and sees which is, I mean how close they are. The difference is of the, or, I will do, we'll do it and see, the difference is of the order of um, I mean, I will give you 0 0.5273 meter GM and the other case GM becomes 0 0.5239, 5237 and 5239, something like that. So, the very difference, it is both are same, it is it, actually we are doing the same thing because if you think of it, actually you can see, see P is P in the derivation, P is really a not a buoyancy force or it is not a negative displacement, but it is something that can be seen as both. It's, there is nothing wrong if you say that P is a buoyancy force because it's like a buoyancy force. It's acting somewhere up in the up, upward direction. It ex behaves exactly like a buoyancy force. So the if you do the cal and you know that initially the ship there is some at that point some there is some buoyancy force and when it is coming down means when the buoyancy force shifts wherever that buoyancy force is acting wherever it is hitting that center line that is the meta center. So it is the final meta center. So the, that is absolutely there is no assumption in any of it, approximation, there is no approximation in either of these derivations. So, both are absolutely correct. So, no, no such thing as which is better or anything, but uh, usually they use this one, kg better because the other one you need km0, because hydrostatic data, uh, kg is known always because it is the very important thing, km is not that uh, commonly used. So, be because of that, I would say that we, we will use this one, kg instead of km. So, this formula is more useful than the other formula, though both are same. Then, okay, so in this case, what do we have? We have displacement is given. As you can see, this column displacement at 5 meter draft 17052, this will remain the same, okay, all throughout the, because it is at 5 meter draft. Then there is no really no point in this t uh, column as such, but then this is P, P will keep increasing. 0, it becomes uh, 1800, 2000, 3000, 5000 like that, P keeps increasing and therefore, W minus P will keep decreasing. So, the value 17000, it will keep decreasing, it goes down up to, in fact, up to 6000, up, up at uh, around uh, 2.5 meter waterline, it will be, by that time, it will become about 8000. Okay. 
Now, the only thing here is to do this thing, this formula. Um, okay, this of course has to be given. Kg zero has to be given. It's the is the center of gravity of the whole ship that has to be given. Kg zero means when the ship is designed or when it is not. It's not about dry docking when the ship is in its usual condition. What is its G zero? That we need to have. It is given in this problem is as eleven meter, and Kg one is your new Kg which keeps varying as the draft keeps changing. So, as the draft keeps going down, G keeps going up okay? and as a result, uh, your K G 1 which is equal to K G 0, no sorry, G keeps going up exactly. So, K G 0 plus uh, G 0 G 1. Okay? So, your G 1 keeps going up or G keeps going up and um, therefore, your K G 1 keeps becoming K G 0 plus G 0 G 1 and at any point G 0 G 1 is given by this formula P into K G 0 by W minus P. Everything we know um, that is the only P is again I told you P is the displacement at every draft. So, <coughs> from so this needs the hydrostatic curve again you look at the hydrostatic curve you have the draft for the draft you read the displacement from that curve from the hydrostatic curve you can read it directly. So, when the displace when the draft keeps uh, decreasing your displacement will keep changing or total displacement will keep coming down it becomes W minus P and therefore, you from that you get this W minus P at each the thing is you keep doing it at steps like draft you change from 5 4.5 4 3.5 4, like that you keep changing it in steps as a result the other one will also keep changing in steps and you put it in this table like this and um, so you keep doing this now see this km0 please note km0 is also not a it might seem as if the km0 is a constant for a whole column i should have probably written a couple of more values but this km0 is not a constant for the whole table because km is defined as a value that is another thing kg for instance doesn't depend upon the draft in that sense okay uh, because it is the weight of the ship, G is at the that does not change, but those are some of the advantages of the second method compared to the, but K m will change, okay? it depending on the draft m will be at some point okay? and when you change the draft m will shift, it will come down or go up. Um, we can actually think, um, actually here I will draw this figure, it looks like this. So, km, km 0 or all these values km 0 uh, it actually comes down like this. No, it is km 0 that is good that is a good point, but I will it is km 0 because m 0 means when the ship is in an upright condition. Ship can be in an upright condition at different drafts. It is at different drafts, but in the upright condition that is the meaning of 0. Okay, it, there are two processes happening here. One is healing, that is what meta center is really associated with, okay. And the other one is the change of draft. Change of draft, I mean, all that you did previously was just dealing with healing. There was no draft was all fixed. We never talked about draft at all at that point. I mean, there was a draft, but no change. This time M0 means zero healing, that is all. Here the draft is changing. So, it is that is what. So, KM0 comes down like this. Um, so, this is how your km0 will vary. So, as your draft keeps uh, increasing, your km0 is actually coming down. Okay? Um, then, okay, so this kind of explains how the km0 comes and that is how this table also says km0 will actually change. So, correspondingly here what is happening? The draft is decreasing, therefore km0 should increase. Yeah. So, km0 will keep increasing 14.08 at the end it becomes 28.8. So, km0 will keep increasing. So, this is your problem. I mean, this is quite straightforward. Um, this is 
the process of dry docking, this is how you calculate the, now the others are just uh, problems which um, just uh, with some twist and all that, that is that we can do, we will do. Now, one more thing uh, is that <coughs> I have already told you a ship is always is mostly trimmed by the stern. Now, we are going to kind of combine the two, we have already done trimming. Now, we are going to combine trimming with dry docking okay, or when you are dry docking, if you remember um, uh, in trimming, we talked about a change in density and that produces a change in draft. As if you remember that produced a trim, just like that this is also a change in draft due to a different reason, this also produces a trim. Okay. Now, um, we will just do at the instant of dry docking, as I told you before the in dry dock, I mean in general ships move like this, means the stern is down, the, uh, the bow is up, okay. always in general the ship is always like this uh, and when it is dry docking also it is like this, so it comes down like this. So, in general in 95 percent of the cases this will hit the ground first. Okay. So, this is where the, uh, the the ship first hits the keel block. Now, uh, when that happens, let us at that instant, the critical instant which we call, so when it keeps coming down, it will hit. So, at that point there is a P acting here, okay. it will be acting only at that point, it is only this point as hit. We for the simplicity purposes, for our purpose, we will assume it is the half perpendicular. So, the half perpendicular hits the ground first and at that point the P acts up and uh, therefore, uh, what will, because of this there is some trim going to happen, we always defined change of trim is equal to the moment causing trim divided by MCTC, that formula you just memorize that, that is it is very straightforward and it is, uh, so, so this one change of trim is equal to moment causing trim divided by M C T C. So, the new moment that comes here, I mean the new force that comes here is actually this P. Okay. So, this uh, this P will give the new moment. So, what will be, remember moment is always taken from the center of flotation, that is how we have defined it. Therefore, the new force that has come is P at a distance of, we usually define the distance of the center of flotation as small l if you remember the de derivations in the previous chapter, small l represents the distance between the half perpendicular and the center of flotation. So, the distance between p and the center of flotation is small l, therefore a moment causing trim in this case is becomes p into l. Okay. So, the change of trim becomes p into l divided by m c t c. This is a particular case and for the purpose of this course, you can assume that if you have a problem where you have dry docking combined with trimming, always you will have uh, the this thing, uh, the half perpendicular hitting and this thing holds, this formula holds and you have the change of trim given by this formula, change of trim is given by this formula P into L by M C T C. Okay. Now, um, so, we write this is usually written as T I think, T is equal to A or just T into M C T C by L. Okay. Okay, now, we have some problems, I change, I put the problems up in the screen now, I will put it here, you can read this. Okay. Now, this is a problem. So, a vessel is now about to dry dock and it is said to be in the following condition. You are given that the draft forward is equal to 6.1 meter, draft aft is 6.7 meter. Oh, and this is a particular case, draft forward is more than draft aft. Um, then <coughs> Km 0 is 7.2 kg 0 is 6. Point, these have to be given, you are, these are the hydrostatic data. Then MCTC is given, TPC is given, 
longitudinal center of flotation is 80 meter forward of aft perpendicular, length is 180 meter and displacement is 11,000 tons. So, you are told that there is a critical instant when the uh, ship hits the um, Oh, actually, one minute. Something I. No, it's correct only. Sorry, I. Uh, it's, that is draft forward is six point one and draft after six point seven. So after is more. I don't know why I got. Anyway, uh, uh, so, all right. So length is one eighty meters. Displacement is eleven thousand tons. You are asked to calculate your GM at the critical instant. Uh, so, the question is the moment you are asked to find GM, you know what you have to find, you need to find that uh, G0, G1 definitely, that means you have to find the change in G, okay. The uh, initial GM you can easily see from the look at the data, I mean look at the problem itself, you are given your initial K, KM0, you have your KG0, you can find your G0, M0, so you, that is directly given you have to find your final GM which is written as G1 M0, okay. This see we are not changing M here, M0 we are not changing here, we are changing G1 M0, um, okay. Therefore, our problem is to find G1, G0 G1. Now, okay, now you need to find your G0 G1, G0 G1 is always given by this formula P into um, kg0 by w minus p. Now, as you can as you can see, we need to find in this problem um, kg0 is known. We need to know p. So we don't know p. Now, how can we find p? Um, it's as you can see, looking at the problem, aft is below. Therefore, it's going to dry dock like this at the critical instant when it touches here. P will come here, acting here. So, P into L by MCTC will give you your trim, okay. Now, uh, what we can do is that, no, it is not an assumption, see the ship will go like this only. So, you know what is that going to be the trim, you are given the trim, the initial trim is given, draft, I mean aft is 6 point, uh, aft is 6.7 and forward is 6.1. So, the difference is the trim, you know the trim and therefore, you can find P like using this formula. Um, P equals T into M C T C divided by L. Um, um, T is the initial trim. Okay, the, what they have assumed here is that see the ship trims like this, okay, it comes and hits here and then the trim becomes 0, okay. It comes like this, it hits here and then it becomes, so the change of trim is the current trim, okay. That is the problem, how the problem is done, I mean that is how you do this kind of problems, when it is, so when it, it initially comes like this, hits here and then sits down. So the change of trim is equal to the trim, is equal to T into MCTC by L, so this gives you P. Okay, this is the critical instant when P this touches here, and then it just sits, and therefore at that inst at that point T into MCTC by L will give you P uh, that you can just do. In fact, it will give you. So you are given your uh, your trim is 0 0.6 meters, so 60 into 155 divided by 80 becomes 116.3 tons. Um, okay, in this problem, so now you can then once you know P, okay, you can do this, you can get this G0, G1. Now they have also done it using the other method where you do M0, M1 instead of this is why this is to just compare it, be, the formula is this P into KM0 by W. Uh, Km0 is given, so P is known and therefore, 
and W is also known. So, this will give you your M0, M1. Now, the two ways in which you can solve is now you okay, you have your G0, M0, you have your G0, G1. So, you can find your G, new G1, new GM, which is your G1, M0. From this, you find this. This is your problem. Now, other thing is you know your G0, M0, then you know your M0, M1, then you sum them up to get your G0, M1. So, these are two ways in which you will have G0, M0 initially, then you will have G0, M1 or G1, M0, either of these two. So, the, actually the, there is a slight difference between the two and the other one is, so okay, these two, this much difference is there between the two, 0.527 and 0.524. So, yeah, that becomes it is very small, it is negligible almost because that much of error will be there in your hydrostatic data anyway, you would not get that accurate anyway. So, it is just a, now in this problem you can see, you are asked the second question is writing moment at 1 degree heel. Okay. Now, it has touched and at that point let us assume that it has a 1 degree heel. At that point, what is your writing? How will you find the writing moment anyway? Writing moment has only one formula. You, you do it using gz. You need to know gz, that is all. So, gz is uh, and you just need to know the formula. Okay, I We need to put it as g1 m0 sin phi, that is all g m sin phi, you just need to know which g m it is. This will give you your writing moment, writing arm, Okay, from that you get the writing moment. So, this you need to find out. Um, again, in the, if you do the two methods, there is a slight difference. I mean, me, two methods means when you use your two g 1 m's, um, like uh, 100.2 and 100.5, there is a slight difference in the answer that does not matter, that is, um, okay. then, then how will you find out your, um, the moment it touches when P comes, what, what will be your bodily change in the weight, bodily change in the displacement at F, means at that we call it parallel rise or parallel sinkage it will actually be rise in this case because P is coming upwards. Now, what has happened? Um, there is a force P acting upwards at this instant, there is a force P acting upwards and when a force P is acting upwards, what will be? It will be just P by TPC, that will be the change in the parallel sinkage. P is a force acting and TPC is given, so parallel rise or sinkage will be given by P by TPC. Okay, this will give you your bodily rise or sinkage and um, okay, that, uh, that is all. Okay, then I think we can do the next problem. Okay. All right. Then this problem states that. Yeah. Sir, in this problem, sir, uh, we have used critical point as a dash is has completely uh, taken the right off. It is. Uh, it's a small difference. Yeah. It it is that the point where the last the aft touches the keel block. Yes, sir. But uh. it is a critical point. But uh, here we have used that uh, critical point is that uh, when ship has completely taken the right off. When, when, where have we used? Ship is completely dried off. So, we have used this uh, so as critical point here. We have this taken as a trajectory. Um, the force will be found out at the instant when ship sits on ship the keel block. Ship completely sits on the keel block. Hmm, there is one slight assumption like that, yeah. Let me see here. Um, uh, 
Okay, I'll check why that is done. I have to read this whole this section. I'll tell you in the next class. Okay. Uh, then this problem says that <coughs> a vessel is about to dry dock in the following condition. You are given the draft forward and draft aft. Then KM zero is given, KG zero is given, MCTC is given, LCF is given, sixty two meters forward. Uh, length is one eighteen meters. Uh, displacement is given. Okay. Now, you are told that at the critical instant, your GM should be 0.45 meter. Um, yeah, in order for that to happen, uh, how much ballast should you transfer from a double bottom tank with a kg of 0.5 meter, 30 meter forward of AP to a double bottom tank with a kg of 0.5 meter, 90 meter forward of AP to ensure that the vessel is in a satisfactory condition. Um, problems are more or less similar, I mean the question is more or less similar, All, always what you need to find is mostly the, um, yeah actually in all the problems they have taken, I will say that, okay, then um, the problem becomes, um, so you are in this case, um, so, you are given your uh, initial trim, you have the draft and uh, uh, forward and aft, then um, do you have P here? Okay. Um, let us see, uh, G 0, M 0 minus G 0, do you have your M 1 here? M 1, K G 0. Um, ah, okay. Actually, this problem is slightly more simple in fact. See, you have your K M 0 and K G 0, that means G 0, M 0 you know. Now, you are told that your G M should not be less than 0.45 meter, that means you can assume your final G M to be 0.45 meter, that is how you do it. So, that means you know your G 0, M 0 and you know your G 1, M 0, therefore, you can find G 0, G 1 directly. and actually using that formula you can go backwards to find p okay you know g0 g1 so you go backwards to find p and once you know p you can find how much trim will happen when it touches at critical instant and so you know your final trim you know your initial trim um, what is the question is to find the ballast to be transferred okay then um, now you know your final trim and you know your initial trim, so you know your change of trim and you know that change of trim is equal to moment changing trim divided by uh, MCTC. So, you know you find the moment changing trim and the moment changing trim is W into distance moved, that is all. W is the um, weight that is given here, no that is a question here, W is the question and you are asked to find D, uh, no D is given and you have to find W. The problem just, just goes like that. Um, so, I will just quickly write the steps. So, you do M0, M1, which can be found, um, okay, you can do it using this form. Anyway, it will be G0, M0 minus G0, M1. Uh, you can write it either like this or using G0, G1, it is the same thing, is is equal to your initial G0 is given 0 0.5. This you get using, actually all these formulas, if you know, then these problems can be done, G, KM0 minus KG this thing minus G0M1 is given as 0 0.45. So, this can be done quickly. Then, um, then we use the formula M0M1 is equal to P into KM0 divided by W. That is also, now here we know M0M1, W, KM0. So, you find out P. So, we know P now. Now, um, we are finding that the final trim, final trim if let us assume it is T, then P into, I mean T is equal to P into L by MCTC. Now, from this you know P is known, L is known, you know um, the final trim, you can find the final trim. Okay. This is calculated. Now, you know your initial trim. 
I mean these things you it should be clear initial trim is equal to forward draft I mean it will be draft draft minus forward draft this will give you your initial trim both of these are given initial draft in the aft and in the forward are given so aft draft minus forward draft will give you your initial trim which is the present trim the final trim if the gm is satisfied is is given to be this okay we don't know after forward but we know the total and how will you find after forward if you want to find there was another formula means you have the total trim how do you find the aft and forward drafts that's what we had a formula like this yes change of trim forward i think this is aft aft is equal to l by l into total t this formula was there so if you use this change of trim aft is this and change of trim forward is f i mean l capital l minus small l by capital l into t that will give you your change of trim forward and then uh, you can find that forward and aft trim then um, okay now once you have this you use the formula change of trim is equal to moment changing trim divided by mctc uh, therefore you know this you know this so you can calculate the moment changing trim okay now once you have that uh, moment changing trim uh, moment changing trim is equal to is equal to uh, w into d so d is the distance through which the uh, ballast has to be transferred that is that is given as in this particular problem it is transferred from see it, when you when you are given this problem like it says okay this is an extra information kg of the tank i don't think we need that kg of the tank is not needed um, so you are told that um, this is not needed this is additional so you need this 30 meter forward of ap to 90 meter forward of ap so the distance through which it's moved is 60 meters forward uh, forward of ap it is moved 60 meters and therefore 60 into therefore that's all so d is 60 meters so w into d will give you so this will give you your answer okay okay um, so i think i'll stop here okay all right thank you